Hey there, and welcome back to the full release of Inkbound, the roguelike action strategy game by Shiny Shoe. So we're heading on to Clairvoyant. I get a lot of questions. People oftentimes debate whether or not the Clairvoyant or the Star Captain is the are the worst aspect. Which one is worst? I think a lot of these are, it's very hard to decide who's the strongest of any of these. I think the full release pulled Obelisk down from being overwhelmingly number one and i think if i if i had to pick the strongest right now the most consistent maybe i guess it depends on how you measure it i think moss cloak feels like the most powerful and generically strong i can i can always find some sort of assembled winning run i mean i feel like i can do that with any of the aspects honestly but moss cloak especially i think it, it kind of falls into place in a very secure way so but the real debate tends to be which of Clairvoyant or Star Captain is worse. I think it's pretty solidly Star Captain for single player play. I have to emphasize single player because support Star Captain is disgustingly strong in multiplayer. But the whole game is very different in multiplayer, so it's it's just a whole different ballpark. Having played it, you've got a lot of a lot of different support, like a, a super tank is very viable, one that just never dies. You just pull aggro at the end of a turn and that's it. Whereas pure glass cannons can be supported as well. You don't, as long as you're not dying to area of effect attacks, you're fine. It's a very different game. Now in solo, however, I think Clairvoyant is better than Star Captain. And I think a large part of what makes Clairvoyant difficult and why the complexity is where it's at is honestly just the fact that you're managing two objects. You've got the orb and you've got the person. And you need to make sure you're handling both effectively. You also need to make sure you're ending your turns in your auras if they're applicable to you. And you want to make sure you balance when you use your psionic charges and things like that. There's a lot going on. So that said... I think we're going to try something that most people don't, or um, rather, I don't normally do since 1.0, but most people, I think, do. And that's going to be in the trinket. I'm going to play Clips of Extraction. If you watched this series before the 1.0 release, you'll know that I was very hot on Clips of Extraction. I thought it was a fantastic trinket. I pretty much always used it. And then it fell off a cliff for me on the 1.0 release. Uh, for a variety of reasons, I think there's more punishment for orbs, but also the way the sets work. It's a little harder to assemble orb-based synergies. You know, obviously you really want to go on Orb Lord if you see this. It's very important. But the way that the combats were also rebalanced, you really needed to be faster, right? Being fast and clearing waves on the first turn is really important. And a good example is the elite combat before the villain, right? That elite combat is very threatening, and if you can clear enemies on turn one, you're going to be in a much better position, right? So then you're killing the big heavies, and you're not dealing with their repeated AoE attacks or enemy spawns or whatnot. Whereas Clips of Extraction is an extremely strong turn two plus relic. Trinket, it's not a relic. I keep words. Everything has its own name. But I don't like how it slows you down. Because not only is it stronger on turns two and beyond, it is actually a detriment on turn one. You have one fewer will on turn one, which means that your turn one is usually pretty garbage. This also hurts your ability to get treasure pots and other things. So I have found that it's, it's a detriment that I don't need to take. In a universe where I could pick Cups of Extraction, instead I could just pick Forgery Forge and buy a build and never get penalized for it, right? Always have baseline functionality and then I will just buy a super strong build. The other side of this would be like Marker of the Unbound, right? Where, sure, I'm just getting free damage. And it not only is it free damage, right? There's also the layer of, with Gunk Filled, it is negating a challenge book modifier that otherwise would be penalizing me. You're removing a major opportunity cost to your run, which is part of what makes Marker of the Unbound so good. These are just two examples of some generic trinkets that I think outperform clips pretty consistently. Meanwhile, because you're clairvoyant and you can do a lot of magic damage stuff, I feel very strongly that you can just comfortably win with Blaze of Bridget and Talons of Sin. Just build a Poison Blood run, build a Burn run, and just go tank, right? Because the, 
the well, how am I trying to say this? The clairvoyance one skill is extremely hyper defensive, and therefore you're such a good tank. It's shielding R, healing R, lots of defense in the aspect, so you're very well prepared for being a super tank while playing Blaze of Bridget. Now, I could show you that. Ooh, do I want to show you that? I was originally going to pick clips and just kind of force it, but if I'm trying to showcase something, it might be cooler to play Blaze of Bridget. You know, I've talked myself into it. Maybe we're going to do this instead. Because the first time I played this, I showed you Forgery Forge, which is my generic favorite for Clairvoyant. It's a very flexible sort of thing. You can play pretty much any build and it will win. But Blaze of Bridget is cool. The most important thing about Blaze of Bridget, in my opinion, is that Incendiary always shows, shows up and that you get the tilt for Molten right away. Your ultimate endgame for Blaze of Bridget is Frostfire. In an ideal world, you hit Frostfire, what is it, six, I think it is, and then you pop off and win. Without Frostfire, you can still win, but it's not going to be as strong of a high roll. It's kind of like you can win with Poison or Bleed, but you're really looking for Poison Blood in the end, so it's all the same. You know what? Yeah, we'll go Blaze of Bridget. I want to show you this. This is kind of what I would normally recommend if you're looking for just a power play on Clairvoyant. I think Clips of Extraction, I do want to have a run with it and try to do some practicing with it, but the truth is I'd rather show you what I think is more confidently a winning run here, so we'll do this instead. And yeah, all right, fair enough. That's all I've got. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's do it. You know, it's crazy. I think about this. I had so much to say and I still took six minutes. It feels like it's a long time. Meanwhile, it felt like I was talking so fast. Brains are weird. Anyway, what are we doing? I did Cinder last run. This is a, not a bad one. On minion defeat, spawn up spin Cinder Pox pool. And then you spawn an additional enemy. On tentacle defeat, the tentacles respawn immediately. I do think Argolath is just too risky. Runestone Guardians are immune to Runestone's hand attacks, but are now no longer immune to bindings. That's fine, right? I'll take this. I'll go fight Shadow of Runestone. That seems reasonable. We'll spread it out a bit. Alright. Now, we do get Gunk Filled as an option. She's pretty good at Gunk Filled because she can hang out in it and then just fire the orb around and do crazy stuff. She has no mobility, so Gunk Filled is a good play here either either way right it's pretty good i could go with that now i think the omni damage is obviously good but i'd like to try i want to show you blaze and we have a good option here garden's edge with stinging wounds you know stinging wounds is a detriment but i think we can work around it remember the minimum heal is always one so the big payout here would be things like vigor to offset that although obviously you don't necessarily even need heals if you're defensive enough so yeah, let's go with Stinging Wounds. This does hurt our defensibility into Blaze of Bridget. We might be relying on things like Regeneration, which gets reduced, but I think we can still make it work. And I just really want to show you Blaze of Bridget here, so here we are. Terrible opening trinket. Nothing good there. Increased range, increased range. I do think increased range on extended pulse is good. I try to avoid cluttering my telekinesis on the early ones, on uncommons, because... I do think that, what am I trying to say? I do think that the one skill has the most auras that are very strong. We'll take extended range on, on pulse, it's fine. Now here, these are all pretty rough. I think I'm just gonna take Quilling Catcher and it's fine, right? I'm not, none of these other things really do anything that exciting. I could go in on Will Collector certainly an option maybe that's better here on your turn one in three chance roughly of getting a will it's pretty decent i guess i'll go in on the voice of fortunes here it's fine we'll go tarnish vault two we are on blaze of bridged so i'm not forgery forge which means we just go in on double tarnished vaults all right remember the rule run yourself over for sure whenever possible we'll pop here for sure Take that orb immediately, pop it again, going to move out of the way and run ourselves over once more, and then run ourselves over once more. This will also, we take a lot of damage here, I guess I could barrier potion and take zero. It's just a high damage combat. Where's this nine coming from? 
I'm losing more than 33%. So what must be happening? Interesting, interesting. What must be happening is I think this is putting them under that threshold and gaining 100%, so it's going 6 and 6. Or maybe one of them is. I'm not actually sure why. Or maybe one of them is getting healed. It's weird. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pop this potion to take 0 on this one. It's not worth it. Yeah, it was 6 and 6, and I guess I already had 3 shields, so fair enough. All right, our goal here is basically to just Shadow Realm these enemies and finish this combat. There's no reason to hang out. Sure, good. Barbed Bones. It's green. Interesting. They show me another Voice of Fortunes. Do I have? I do have a grinder. This puts me on the path of Will Collector, which is fine. We could go... I mean, there's always the infinite to chase, which is acceptable, I think. We'll do that. I'll take 15 magic damage here. I think that's okay. It at least gives us some direction. And I will see the blade, the incendiary here, which is worthwhile. Better than cleave and lightning bolt for sure. We're going to grind up one of the voices of fortunes here. It puts me on will collector. Now I'd really like to find, you know, flame bead or something like that. But I really can't risk any of these hard combats. We're just not strong enough. We finally get our first potion. That's good. Vengeful Infusion is nice. It's actually my second potion, but you know, I use the first one. It's also nice that we got an easy combat here because we we were shown the... What's it called? We're shown the treasure pot. I am going to throw fire up. Our goal is to run ourselves over first. We will pop the small guys. I'm going to move here. I actually think we want to pop those small guys in place. And then we wish to move up here and run. Actually, we're going to move behind this guy first. Hit ourselves and then end our turn like this to kill that other friend, which is good. We push a lot of damage through because the burn stacks were... Our burn stacks are very strong here is the like an important takeaway. This is going to be straightforward. We go pop and then we blast here, which is nice. How big is this AoE? I could potentially move it up, right? Move it up here and then pop it. That's good because it gets rid of this other ink drain guy, right? Which is very important to me. Fantastic. And then I go here and we should be able to pop this out and take zero on the turn. Good job. Okay, cool. Now it's just a matter of dealing with the final wave, and this should be not much of a problem at all. Just throw some fire at him and blow him up and it's over. Cool. All right, pretty straightforward. We take zeros and look good here. Counselor's Ledger. On your turn, your bindings cost two less will until the first one is used. It's not going to be very helpful for me, although it does put me potentially on curios, which is fun. More importantly, I like Orb Lord. If we get on Orb Lord, I really like that. Second stroke of genius. It's effective, right? It's effective. It essentially represents 40 magic power, which is good. Although I do like Misting Bells. Especially if I end up on Orb Lord. After Image looks like it will be our defensive binding. I'm not going to spend this one glyph because I need it for the key. So, all right, we'll take Blur, I suppose. It's fine. Is it Misting Bells? I actually think it really is just do a whole bunch more damage. It's a huge swing there, which is good. And I'm going to grab Shining Circlet because this puts me on Orb Lord, which I really appreciate, which is very useful when you have Will Collector. These are two good sets to be on. Go to the Shrine. I'm going to sacrifice the Shining Circlet here because we end up on Orb Lord for it. Fantastic. We're going to still stay on normal combats. So we get two superior vaults. If we can roll into a flame bead, we're cooking. That's really where we want to end up here. At least at this point of the run. Okay, now I think I can hit them all. Let's run ourselves over. We'll pop, pop, pop. Very good. I'm going to throw fire over here at Big Man. Because reasons. Take this orb here. We'll continue to do damage. 
suppose I might as well run him over. There's really no reason not to. We'll leave him in it at the end of the turn, and then end turn there. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but the burn is doing heavy lifting. All right, now a big AOE on number two is a really good skill. I mean, it's it's nice because look how big that field is. It's just real safe. We just blast this. Then we get the big skill. Then I get to go in here, pop, and he should just pass away and we win the combat. Incredible, very safe, no damage taken, looking good. Wow, Frostfire Ember is really strong. Okay. On hitting an enemy inflicted with Frostbite, inflict three stacks of burn, but it gets me some Frostbite, which is cool. Now, how interesting. I think I do want Orb the Shining Circlet because look at this, right? That gets me Orb Lord 3 and Expert Binder 3. It's actually huge. What's coming up, actually? Let me be real here. I have a grinder. Will Collector 5 is pretty powerful. And I can grind this. Orb Lord 7 is the real win. I want that second orb. It's really good. And if I grind up this Expert Binder here, we end up on Expert Binder 5 immediately and Orb Lord 5. I actually think the correct choice is to go in on Fleece of Gold here. Not Frostfire Ember, as bummer as this is. I mean, you take this, you grind it, and then now we're on Frostbite. And we're really cooking. Oh, it's such a crazy good roll. We're really cooking with this, yeah? Grind this up. We end up on Frostbite and Molten. I think we potentially dilute ourselves a little hard by going on this Frostfire Ember here. I think it is correct to take Fleece of Gold and grind that. As weird as that decision may seem, I think it's right. We had pretty good luck on these opening orbs here. Not orbs, but grinders. We're seeing a lot of good grinds, which I appreciate. We get a fish for the boss, which is a good fish. I must buy the key. Let's just do it. Let's see what the shop offers. Future Willer. It's not bad, but it's not what I want. Frostbite damage now increases damage dealt by burn. That seems not right. We're going to reroll that. Forgotten name is very good. I want that. Yes. And then I could take Beat of Metal, but no. I'm going to spin this again. Another Fleece of Gold is actually excellent. This is a really good pickup because she's very efficient at using one, one shield per one will which generates Shattered Will quickly here. It's good, right? It's very strong. And then Forgotten Name puts me closer to Will Collector 8, which is good, but also more, more importantly gets me on Enchanted 3, which is free damage. So it's looking like my build is kind of like this here. I've got the Shattered Wills. This is also scaling magic damage until the end of combat, which is good. I do think I'm going to need the fish for this combat. Let's be honest here. I think I will need it for the first boss. But we're on a good trajectory here. It's a Shattered Will Infinite possibly. But more importantly, if this just gives me a ton of will that lets me cycle stuff and drop things like Incendiary twice, I'm going to try to be connecting Expert Binders Reduction with our Incendiary plays so that we're very fast, right? What'd we get? Blast back, Nim's Sorrow. Yeah, so like the play here is we throw fire on this man, right? And then it's like, okay, what do I do? The answer here is we run ourselves over. You hit the two skill and we take this orb and it always refreshes first. So it's one cooldown becomes zero and then we get the fire back. And that's just a lot of scaling here. Now, I do... Right, it did redirect on killing him. So I'm going to run myself over a little bit here. 
and continue to do so. Yes. I'll take that three, it's fine. Okay, now he redirects, but it doesn't actually matter. It's pretty much impossible for me not to trigger Nim Sorrow. I genuinely think this is kind of like a pointless mechanic because what are you going to do? You really can't do anything, right? There's nothing you can do. Now, I don't want to hit Spirit Bomb. I want to move, take the orb, which refreshes all of my stuff. He's going to throw a bomb at me, but I have an area out. Throw fire at him again. We chill. We move away. We run ourselves over. It's good. We do it again. Great. Shattered Will, thank you. We continue to run ourselves over. You see the value here. I'm generating a lot of shield being able to do that. And we should get out of this combat pretty cozy. If I save the orb, I think we are chilling, right? I'm going to go ahead and Shattered Will. I can just walk away. Yeah, you can just walk away. So let's hit again. Man, I'm gonna tell me tell you how good Forgotten Name is. I can just walk over here and take zero and stay near this orb, which will give me a very strong power play at the start of this turn. Where I get the double, uh, I get double fire here. So first order of business, walk in, hit it, two skill, good. Orb, throw fire at him, hit him with the two skill, orb, throw fire at him, hit him with the two skill. You see this, I haven't actually even used aftermath yet, which gives you a good sense for how strong we are. I want to save the three big bomb for chompies. Yeah, we save it for chompies, and then we just walk away. I'm gonna corner up here. The reason I'm cornering up is it forces the chompies and the boss to collect, or rather it forces the chompies to collect, which is the whole point. All right, we're gonna run ourselves over here. It's nice to do it. Yep. We blast. It's good. We take the orb. It gives me fire. We like fire. We blast. We explode. Now, I am taking a lot of damage here because apparently these bombs perfectly overlapped my space. I don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and hit that after image. And then we're going to walk a little and do our best. I do take 12 here, I believe. Yeah, I do. But it's okay. We get the kill and we win, and that's fine. All right, we get the healing. It's not going to be great because stinging wounds, but that's okay. You deal 25% bonus attack damage to enemies afflicted with burn. It's very effective, as it turns out. I guess we'll super spirit bomb. I don't like spirit cannon. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not a fan. I do think doing 25% more damage is if is good. So we'll click that. Unfortunately, no ability to reroll here. I don't love how expensive Super Spirit Bomb is, but remember, we're not really activating this all that often. This is basically just me saying, okay, what if instead blast? It's pretty much not my core ability here. I'm not going to be using it that often. My grinds here are what? Fleece of Gold is pretty efficient that I would like to keep. I'll tell you what, I really would have liked Astrokinesis. There's a lot of the upgrades on Telekinesis or what? Or Psychic Pulse would have been pretty cool, but... All right, let's see. Well, is there anything else I wanted to purchase down here? Golden Egg. No, I'm good. I'm good here. All right. We move on. I think the grinds here are... Difficult to say what I want to move in on. I'm thinking it's going to be grind the circlet because it gets me Orb Lord 5, which is basically like shining circlets, or rather, uh, was it Expert Binder 5, which is essentially shining circlets effect, right? 
except this is your highest cooldown. This will become all cooldowns on your turn get reduced, which is just good. It also gets me closer to the Orb Lord that I want. And I think I'm going to just grind up. We're going to do Voice of Fortunes, end up on Will Collector 8. We're going to find more Will Collector stuff, so I don't know how important that is. I'm actually going to grind up Stroke of Genius here, just so that I have more starting damage. We're going to go ahead and move Forgotten Name into the leftmost spot. I think we want to keep Fleece of Gold here. These other two are kind of flexible, but it's fine. These are all pretty rough. Ink Shield is not good. We should be able to offset it. I do think Final Chapters is Doom. We're a little slow. Gunkfield is very dangerous for us now. It's a bummer that they showed us the Gunkfield twice here now. So, it's very dangerous. We have no mobility. I can't take... And the only mobility is essentially Orb Lord, and then hopefully a 20 movement from the orb, orb is enough. I think we have to go Derelict Starship. It's not ideal, but I should be able to pop these shield stacks. So, okay. Not where I want to go, but fine. One of these challenge modifiers are always suboptimal. There's very few that are just free, right? All right, I want... We don't get double augments, do we? Double rare augments is what I want here. So instead, I think the right choice is I want to look at two superior vaults. See if I can roll into something really powerful for one of my sets. All right, I don't know if I want the fish on this combat. Let's see, Elemental Ale. It's a lot of damage I could just bust out. This is a very big nuke. We'll see. I might save the fish for the next combat, though. Okay, first order of business is to run yourself over. We're going to pop one. Actually, the first order of business is to throw fire. Then we pop one. Then we orb. I'm going to go ahead and after image here. Roll a crit here, which is kind of fun. I can actually do an absolute truckload of damage here. Which is pretty neat. Four damage is pretty okay, I think. Yeah, it's acceptable. All right, and then we have Chompies doing Chompy things, so that's exciting. Now, Super Spirit Bomb finishes this combat. I don't think there's any tricks here, but I do want to grab the Orb first for the heal. Then I'm going to Super Spirit Bomb and get out. All right, we're going to eat this fish over here. Sure, put it for the next combat, see what we roll into. Beat of Metal. I don't want to get in on Pincushion is the problem. Leaky Pen is huge. Leaky Pen is so huge. Ah, oh, 100% Leaky Pen. That's nuts. We love to see it. Shielding Aura is great. Yes, Shielding Telekinesis. Absolutely want that. Thank you. Very cool. Rare Augments. Now, I could sacrifice Orb Lord, or I could honestly take Death Scythe. It's kind of weird, but this is pretty decent. Remember, I have Orb Lord 5, or 3 rather, which means I do get the healing from the second Leaky Pen. So this is pretty cool. Death Scythe is pretty fantastic. It's hard to say no to this here. It will give me a lot of survivability. I think I'll be able to buy into a better Orb Lord thing, right? I'm looking for Flame Bead here. Like, give me that Death... We'll go Death Scythe here. I think this is pretty solid. All right. Okay, we get a grinder. What do you grind from this position? That's a good question. I might go grinder and then simply not use it until the following combat is finished, right? I don't think I benefit from grinding any of these right now. Although the question then becomes, hmm, difficult choice. I have to beat the Guardian of the Unbound Key. I think I can do that without using this grinder, so we'll take the key. I think we're pretty confident into this. I have a... Well, I don't really think that the fish is going to matter. 
but we have a lot of good tools for this, and I can push out a lot of damage numbers quickly. Man, how much do you want to greed here? I think you can't afford to greed at all. We're going to run each ourselves over. We pop the two skill. All right, now I have to take an orb here. Right, we throw fire. It's good. Throw fire is good. Damage numbers. Take the orb. Right, throw fire is still good. Maybe I run myself over with another shield. I want to end in this shield for the shielding aura. Could take. I want to save after image for Chompy turn. I guess I'm going to just block some damage, right? Sure, seems okay. I don't know if I'm going to get this treasure pot is my first question mark. We definitely want to press the two skill here. Take an orb, throw fire. I want money very badly, huh? I think this is... Got a super spirit bomb. I'm at full charge. I'm not at full charge. Take this orb. Let's go ahead and hit this orb. Do I get... How, how powerful is this bomb play? The bomb play gets me a lot of money. Just a truly large amount of money. It's good because it gets me a good chunk from the, the pot, even if I don't finish him. It's worth it. It also stuns that guy, so it stops a whole bunch of damage, which is cool. All right, now we can focus up. We at least managed to pull some good numbers here. I'm going to go ahead and orb up. All right, we're going to take a shot here. I'm going to take the orb. We got more fire. Fantastic. Throw fire at everything. I do want to pop those chompies, which matters. And then I'm going to run myself over a couple times. Sure, seems okay. Take three. I should be able to offset some of this, at least, with the power of orb after image here. I guess I should throw fire somehow. It's honestly going to be correct to hit him with the big blast here. We get Death Scythe and some other stuff. Throw fire now. Great job. We're slow-ish because I haven't upped Molten a lot, but I'm not mad about our progress, right? I'm at a point where I can actually just ignore the boss and completely focus on survivability. Which is cheeky, but you know what? Accurate. Like, this guy doesn't hurt me now. So I guess I cleared that and I just throw fire at him into my turn, right? It's all about this position, right? We have enough damage over time that I'm not actually afraid. How close are you to stunning? 1404. I can do 15. I mean, I can force him to... I just hit him with the blast, right? That math didn't check out. Interesting. 207. All right, we get it. Great. Throw fire at him now. Very cool. All right, we should win pretty comfortably. All right, this is another turn. Just run yourself over, and it's actually completely free, right? I missed myself. I'm greeting. I'm griefing myself. It's okay. We're we're literally just full greeting here. There's no reason to do anything fancy. We tank 10. All good. Great job. Excellent. What is in the vault? Anything fun? Scalding half charm is the grind here. Hands down. I need to get more molten. Just full stop. I would like to kind of, I would actually have liked to have kept it. I suppose I could keep it, but I do think I need a grind. So I think we're going to just grind the Scalding Half Charm here. Rare Augment Damage Aura is nice. We'll see what we hit. All right, Shielding Pulse is fantastic. Now that procs the Fleece of Gold. We love that. Absolutely. Cool. Psychokinesis. Gain two shield when the shard go goal 
globe runs through you. Fantastic. And I gain shards for running enemies over. This is nuts. This is pretty much ideally what I wanted. Full tank mode. I'm going to go ahead and grind the half charm. Which is fine, right? Or Molten 4 is good. I'm happy about that. It gets me closer to Molten 6. It does get me on Everfrost, so maybe we see something cool. How do I feel about Quickening Image? Is Damage Aura just better? If you have On turn end, if you have Full Charge, Spirit Bomb deals 75 more damage on its next use. It's not bad. I think I'm just going to... I don't know about damage aura. It's kind of a weird one. I might save this for something else. I think I'm going to take the charging spirit bomb. I have been using it. I do have super spirit bomb, so it's not the worst thing I could click on, right? Quickening image is weird because I'm just going to abuse... What is it? Expert binder? Yeah, I'll take the charging spirit bomb. It's fine. All right, we get another grinder, which is cool. We'll take it. Feeling good about this. I have gained seven max hit points. Every little bit helps. Let's see. Superior Vaults, Rare Augment. Ooh, Rare Augment times two is a very strong setup. I'm going to go for Rare Augment times two. I like the idea of Superior Vaults because I could find grinders here, right? Two things. One thing could be ground up. One thing could be not but I'll have enough money to go to the shop afterwards. Let's hit these rare augment twos and then we're okay. I'll come back for a grind afterwards. What is this pop potion? Mercurial elixir. Sure, 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 sure. If I need the vengeful elixir, I'll toss it, right? Yeah, I'll control click it. This should be, yeah, I was gonna say this is the Thanalope combat. I had a feeling. Okay. First order of business, throw fire. It's good. Next order of business, hitbox on the guy on the right is ridiculous. We're gonna go here. I am going to, I could just run myself over a lot. Let's take the after image here. I'm gonna go for the power orb. I am going to stay in the thing for the shield gain, which is good. I get to throw fire now, which is pretty strong. Or I guess I don't have to, but I probably should throw fire. All right, let's grab the orb now. I don't want to take the hit here. Yeah, I don't want to take the hit on this guy, so I'm going to go up. I'm taking 18. 18 is a big number, but I can run myself over a few times, and I think reduce this down to a much more manageable point. 10. I think this guy is dying from the aura, hazard aura. Am I willing to take 10 here? You could eat this potion. I should value my health, right? Value our health. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Second Thanalope spawned. Right, you have to remember this is chaos. Uh, this is a very, very strong turn, though. If I move and then blast like this. Real powerful play. Good. Orb in. Let's blur here. Orb again. Let's run ourselves over a bit and keep doing it. Right? I think it's correct to do it. Yes. 12 damage. All right, we're taking a lot. This is, uh, remember, this is a hard combat, so we're not terribly surprised about this being so difficult. I could go full charge, which is worthwhile, I think. That kills a lot of enemies, yes. I'm going to wiggle this a little to the left. 
right? Because the AoE is fairly large. So I can go to the left just a smidge, take the orb, and we can Shadow Realm a lot of enemies. It's good. We're risking a fairly decent chunk. Let's take after image first before moving. Run over to power orb here. And I'm going to run myself over to get Shattered Will, which is good. And then I'm going to run myself over again. And we end our turn taking only four here. This is a hard combat. So remember, we're not terribly surprised that this is so difficult, right? I'm not actually that surprised about this. Now, I could work on this man, or I could greed turns. I wonder, I want to pick up my potion. Do we greed turns here? Let's take this orb. I could potentially heal myself up pretty high on this guy, right? Now he obviously, he's like, grr, I'm mad at you. I should probably push some burn on him, I think, just to get this moving. Yeah. The goal here is to heal myself a whole bunch. Now he'll eventually die. I'm not worried about that. Great. Take the orb. Take the orb. We can walk away. I wish to prime my... Is he dead already? He actually just passively explodes on this turn, which is fine. We gain a lot of magic power from this forgotten name. It's a really good relic. I don't have anything that spawns an orb, right? Heals me? No. All right, it's fine. Taking zero, he's dead? Sure, why not? All right, cool. Pretty straightforward. We're up to 54 max hit points. Feels decent. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad either. Rare Augment says uh, it's okay. Full discount's not bad. Hexing Aura is really good. Man, Hexing Aura is really good. But I also gotta tell you, Blurring Image is also really good. What's this vault show me? Chalice of Champions. It's a fun one. That is fun. I get a grind behind me as the important piece of this intelligence, right? That's true. Starwalker's not terrible. It gets me up to Expert Binder 6 by grinding it, which is good. I like that. Yeah, I don't think it's Chalice of Champions here. Let's see what the other rare augment shows me. I might want to reroll that. That's a bit of a bummer. I actually, I don't think... Firestarter Incendiary is not bad. It is an additional 10 stacks of burn initially, and then 5 stacks per use, which is a lot. I suppose we should do this. This is good damage improvement. Yeah. Now here, I like Hexing Aura, but I really think Blurring Image has got to be correct. We're going to take hits, and this is a lot of defense. Two Blur stacks is really strong. Love Hexing Aura, though. But I do have a grinder behind me. Don't forget this. So what is the grind? I could always just grind Voice of Fortunes. It's not a very impactful vestige. The only reason I would do that is if I want to keep one of these. Which reasonably could be scalding half charm right i take this and then i grind up the voice of fortunes this gets me everfrost three which is not helpful because i can't generate frostbite yet sadly or i could take expert binder it's a weird one because i don't my first i'm inclined to move my orb usually to position around wherever the enemies are and that's not very helpful. It's a good grind though, right? I think if I grind anything on this one, I'm grinding the Thanalope's Tuft. If I'm keeping something and grinding Voice of Fortunes, then it's Scalding Half Charm. Let's grind the Tuft, I think. This will give me more impact. The Starwalker will benefit After Image's base cooldown, which makes it a little more accessible. 
Gets us back on Expert Binder 5, which I had fallen off of for a moment. We get another grinder. Sure, they've been really generous on the grinders here, which I'm not mad about. And we think we get a shop here, right? Yeah, all right, we get our shop. So I have a grind available to me, which is exciting. Counselor's Ledger, huh? I don't like that one here. Paradigm Shift is... When using a binding, reduce cooldowns by one. And I can abuse this with Orb Lord, possibly? Interesting. It does show me Expert Binder. I think I would like to purchase something that gets me Council, that gets me Will Collector 8, in my opinion. So let's, I think we can do better. Oh, Carnival Candy is interesting. I don't hate Swift, actually. Huh. What if, here's an idea. What if you grind Carnival Candy? What does this do again? Movement will reserve. Ooh, your starting turns are really good, is the thing. I do like these opening turns being more powerful. I need to generate Shattered Will as part of the issue. I could also just buy another Will Collect, another Forgotten Name, which is really good scaling, and I could just replace the Stroke of Genius with it, which is... Like, definitely happening, right? Just I just dropped this guy, and we're chilling here. That's a really good play. So now, you'll see we have Will Collector 8. But I'm inclined to just dumpster Voice of Fortunes. Right? This is not that impactful. Like, oh boy, maybe it works. I like... I like this Carnival Candy. I actually... I could grind another instance of... I could grind another Banalope's Tuft, huh? I'd like to find an Orb Lord, maybe. On critting, gain one will once per turn. No, that's not it. Three turns of Burnout. What does Burnout do? Lose one HP and gain ten Omni damage until the end of combat. So, this is pretty powerful, right? It's pretty powerful. We're going to have a hard time... ...buying everything we want. Hmm. We could go in on Melting. I could burn Melting Spout here, right? Which is 30 Omni damage. It's an expensive grind. But it's pretty good. I could also keep this. It's a lot of damage to just take constantly. Hmm. Okay, it's a difficult call. Most of the, these commons are not terribly helpful here. Forgotten Name is my scaling right now. So, and then Fleece of Gold has proven itself to be very useful. I would, I kind of in hindsight wish I had kept the first one, so I'd have two at this point. Though it did, I think it tilted me towards finding the second one, so I'm not mad about it. I have a grind behind me, and none of the grind options are terribly strong here. I could go in on... The best grind here is probably Expert Binder here. It's actually probably Melting Spout, if I'm being honest with you. I get nine more burn damage. And then defeated enemies spread their burn around, which is pretty good. And you get Shadow. It's expensive, though, is the problem. It's a very expensive play. Whereas, like, if I do Stone Pitch Pipe, all wills barred, right? Do I ever crit? How often do I crit? Enough? I have After Image, so it's not impossible to get this. 
So, okay, here's what we can do. I think we can drop Voice of Fortunes, and then we'll get all Wills Bard. It's not amazing, but it's acceptable. It gets me Will Collector 8. I'm not actually on Precision, but After Image gets me this one Will once per turn, which is pretty decent. Then I think I grind Stone Pitch Pipe. This is just a more efficient play. I grind this because we get much closer to Expert Binder 9, which is really good because it means I can just kind of burn everything. We'll walk into this combat with Stroke of Genius because it is, I guess, just 15 magic damage, and that's okay. And we've spent pretty much everything, and we're going to the combat. Okay. Second forgotten name is helpful. I wonder who we roll into today. Let's stay near the center. Weaver. Okay, so he comes center and he goes like this. All right, that's a bit of a bummer. Oh, he does so much damage. This guy starts with just 30 damage. It's actually unbelievable how dangerous this dude is. We're going to throw fire here. I'm going to honestly just run myself over here. Take the orb. We're going to throw more fire. I'm going to continue to run myself over, I suppose. It's fine. Take the orb. We're going to throw more fire here. Right? Yes. Just keep loading up these things with tons of burn damage. I'm going to click Blur. I'm going to pop. How much movement can I do? I can take two damage. So then we move two over, keeping everything in, and then run away and take zero here. And that's probably the best turn we're going to get here. Ugh, Weaver Attuned is the worst, let me tell you. Now, a single orb should respawn everything here. So let's move up. Can I actually run myself over and hit them all? I sure can. We're going to pop here. Orb resets everything. Blur is huge. I kind of just want to throw fire at the boss here. Then we take blast here. Orb resets pretty much everything. We throw more fire at the boss. Just keep that number going. I want to pop all these fellas. And then we run out. And now we run ourselves over with whatever additional we can get. I take two damage, which is not bad. It's a pretty decent chunk of burn we've applied. I have a very good super spirit bomb loaded as well. It's true. That's true. I think the important play here is going to be double blur for sure. Let's run ourselves over real quick. Shoot once. Orb. Shoot twice. Orb. I think I am going to want to shoot third time. Yes, then I wish to blur again because I do not wish to pass away. Is that actually efficient? It's about as efficient as just hitting myself with shield. So maybe we just run stuff over here until I grow tired of it. And then I will walk away and hit myself one last time here and gain a shielding aura. I think I can phase next turn with Super Spirit Bomb, which is important. Because he's, yeah, he's doing a lot of damage here. So let's, again, run ourselves over because it's important to do it. Great. And I think I phase here with just Super Spirit Bomb. Good. Cool. I am still taking damage from, I guess, his Mimic Thread. So let's just generate shield here and then sit on a bunch of orbs. Which I think is cool. Oh, it was actually his bomb that was doing it, so that's fine. Okay, we get a lot of turns here to do some serious work. So let's do that serious work. Stack, burn on him. It's important to do it. 
walk it over. Bomb is still good. We'll take orb one. More fire. All right, we're going to blast two. All right, I should take zero on this turn now. Orb two. I guess I could just play after image as well, but it kind of isn't that important. I think I would like to finish this turn rhyming. And imagine if I had the doubler here. I could just double that every turn, which would be very silly. Uh, I would like to prime my Shattered Will, which triggers on eight. Trigger I mean, I'm on seven right now, which is pretty much perfect. Let's stay centered. So guys, well, it doesn't really cluster them, but it keeps me in the R. We, who'd we get? We got Moss Cloak. All right, it's better than the alternative. Now, fortunately, because the downturn, he just eats, a, he took 104 bloody damage. So he's having a terrible day and will continue to have a terrible day. We're just going to Shadow Realm all these units at once. Super Spirit Bomb is your friend. Orb. Take a blur here. We'll orb again. I guess I'll take a blur here again. Sure. I'm going to run myself over. I'm currently taking zero inside of all this stuff. I mean, I guess I would stay in the field. He's actually dead, so it doesn't really matter. Now, the second phase, he stood no chance because I got the free setup turn but pretty good also our forgotten names really ramp up very fast so 66 health we're currently sitting at a cool 53 which is nice after image upgrade did we get the good one ally gains two stacks of blur critical charge and 15 movement yeah honestly phasing image is just blur but better i'm okay with this this is fine yeah, two stacks of blur is more defense. We take these. Look at the augment, see what we get. Man, no healing aura. No healing aura. I do not need charging pulse, I don't think. I'll take critical critical telekinesis. I don't know about that. Charged spirit bomb, 100 damage at full charge. I mean, it makes the number big, and it can guarantee a crit, so I guess I don't hate it, but I have enough psionic charges from psychokinesis here. Let's take char charged spirit bomb. It's fine. It's not good, but it's fine. Moving on. All right. I'm feeling okay about this run. If we can turtle on the early combats well enough, we get a chance to really benefit of really early turns. I mean, we really benefit from forgotten name, which spirals out of control quickly. It's these early turns that are the scariest, right? Like this turn right here, I need to kill some big stuff or we're having a very bad day, right? I mean, we're already walking in and this is just like, all right, well, have a nice, have a nice day, I suppose. All right, I get cool crit. Let's go ahead and apply some burns. I'm gonna take first orb here, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna take first orb, throw more fire at everything, which is cool. Our priority is, if I can do it, is to kill as many of these. Get this ink in a box basically dead. Now, also, when I... What's the word I'm trying to use? When I get my first crit, I gain will. So let's remember to click that. Honestly, I will happily take more shadow image blur. It reduces damage by a significant margin. Then I can crit something, and we gain a ton of value. I have... I will take damage here, and that's going to be okay, I think. We're going to run ourselves over a few times. It's tricky. I've applied a lot of burn, but you have to see, remember, our scaling is slow. So these early turns, I desperately need to not lose, is pretty much it. I have a Super Spirit Bomb, which is a fantastic early play here. So let's wiggle this up. Now, he's on Retaliate mode, right? Is he on Retaliation? He doesn't have the buff for Retaliation, so I guess not. Inky Might, whatever. All right, so let's move the orb a little bit here first. 
Then we're going to Super Spirit Bomb here. It's an important play, which reduces a lot of damage by just virtue of killing everything. We play, for sure, the Blur, which is huge damage reduction. It is mission critical, in my opinion, to kill the Ink in a Box on this turn. Cool, we did it. Let's chase ourselves with our orb here. Grab the second orb. Okay, I get fire. There's no safe place for me here. I have three will. I'm not procking shattered will here. It's just an important takeaway. We're not getting it. That's okay. I'm not mad about that. Yeah, it's all right. Have I already procced all Will's Bard here? I think I have. Yeah, I did because I did a Super Spirit Bomb crit. Yes, of course. So I think at this point, the best play is truly just to run yourself over a few times and hope for the best. I take nine here. That's a bit of a bummer, but acceptable. We got rid of the Ink in a Box before the second one spawned, which actually is just like unironically very important. We're at risk of taking a billion damage here, but fortunately Blur is going to... 107 incoming damage. Blur is going to do a lot of heavy lifting. I'm going to take the orb, and I'm going to take the second orb now, although actually I think I really should pop here. Yeah, we'll pop there. I do get Super Spirit Bomb, which will kill a majority of all these things, which is just gonna be correct then i take this orb now unfortunately i got unlucky on phasing images cooldown the things that are threatening the most damage here are the shadow quill on next turn right he's gonna he's gonna threaten me for 11 direct hit one of these slimps is doing some of these slimps are doing a lot of damage too which is kind of weird I suppose. I'm going to get the fire on. Can I get all four of them? No, it's fine. Some of the slimps are just like doing zeros because of blur and I don't really care about them. All right, let's move and blast. This will save some damage. I can walk out of this. I'm down to 17 now, which is good. I think I want to walk over here and hit myself with my orb a couple times. All right, we're taking 13. This is a very dicey combat, but I do think we're getting out of it. Very good. All right, here's this guy threatening me for 11. Watch him. He might actually be more because of Inky Might. Yeah, he's at 18 threat right now, which is ridiculous. I do have Orb. Roll this up into the middle of this combat, and we hit a really good Super Spirit Bomb. Now, I would like to take this orb first, so I get the second blur up. Then we super spirit bomb, which reduces this to zero. Fantastic news. I'm gonna, now, the next biggest threat is this guy in the bottom right, of course. Bottom left, I mean. We'll get him down. Get some burn on him is good. I'm currently being threatened for zero right now, which is cool. Thank you, blur. Very neat. I'm going to run myself over and chill. Right? Cool. This guy down here is probably threatening more than 18 because he's going to get more inky might, I think. Right? Or I'm not sure how exactly that map... Where the yeah, he does. He gets it. It's this guy. It's the ink in a box that's doing it, right? Yeah. Increases attack and shield of all enemies. It's pretty spicy. So, we need to be careful. I'm going to take one blast here is good. Orb one. Everything is active. Blur is your friend. Hit him with the bomb. A lot of damage reduced. Blur is your friend still. We're going to hit this guy again. Fantastic. And now I'm pretty much just going to tank this turn so I can get Death Scythe next turn. And buy additional turns for... Really, the, big, the additional turn I want to get is the... Orb Lord healing, right? That's what I'm really here for. Orb Lord. 
blast that guy out. Great. Orb Lord. Just run yourself over and leave, pretty much. I'm going to try to greed as many turns as I can get, is the thing. Blur. Orb Lord. Blur. Orb Lord. We sit. My aura is just passively doing a bunch to these guys, but it's okay. My goal here is to farm health. Now, I would like to kill one of them on this turn, just so that you have to remember I'm trying to get Death Scythe optimized as well. So let's hit this guy. Run ourselves over again. Get out of range. Pop this one fellow. All right. Take Blur, Orb Lord. I guess we'll just keep blurring here. There's no reason to, but we will. And I'm going to continue greeting. I need to make sure I maximize everything here. Run yourself over a whole bunch. Let's just handle this real quick. Cool. Orb. Cool. Let's leave the area. Take the other orb just for good measure. I'm basically trying to prolong this as long as I can. Which I should be able to do, right? We just go blur, orb, blur, and take nothing. It's slow, but I'll thank myself for the healing later, right? It's not that complex. Blur, orb, blur, orb, blast one of these dudes move it up all right we're chilling i think i have this is the final turn yes it is this is the final turn it's gonna be just click orb orb after this turn it's gonna i'm gonna start taking damage it's not worth it and we just super spirit bomb to finish this out good Okay, that's about as good as we can optimize that combat to be. Max HP is 80, I'm up to 55 health, feeling okay about it. I do see Frostfire Ember. It's going to be really hard to find enough pieces for... Well, is it? Huh. I actually... Interesting. I actually have enough grinds here to get Frostfire 4, which is pretty decent, right? Heal Aura. Yes, this is so good. Although, I gotta admit, Blazing Incendiary applying an additional 15 burn is pretty cool. I think the Heal Aura is going to provide more value in the end, though. Ooh, it's spicy and difficult. Let's go for Healing Telekinesis. I really like that Aura. We're going to open up the shop. I'm pretty confident I'm take. I, oh my god, but Leaky Pen number two is just so ridiculous here. With Orb Lord and Expert Binder where it's at. Can I get Expert Binder nine here? I'd have to re-roll one of these guys. I think going for Frostfire is a mistake. The play here is going to be Stroke of Genius. And I'm going to take Leaky Pen, I think because a second leaky pen is incredible. Right? Just fantastic. And I think I roll this one and look for something better. Hmm. Tongue of the Frozen Flame might be it. I think... So what's the plan? I could grind up all Will's Bard, I guess? What is your grind here? That's the real question. Maybe I grind up one of these leaky pens just to hit Orb Lord 7? I actually think I do that, right? Because I can't afford anything here. Yeah. Alright, so here's the deal. I'm grinding up a leaky pen. This seems crazy, except that I get this back from Orb Lord 7. So, practically... This just gives me one free will reserve, right? Is how this practically works. It gives me back the will reserve, and it gives me the slot in my inventory, which is good. Great, we're on Orb Lord 7. Fantastic. Now, 
I didn't really roll as many Will Collector as I wanted to. I mean, I got Will Collector 8, but I did not roll the Shattered Will stuff, right? Which is pretty wild. Now, that means I could just casually take Crystallarium or something, but I actually think... On hitting an enemy inflicted with burn, inflict one stack of frostbite. Is that actually good? I think I do want to max out Molten here. It's important. Yeah? I think it is actually just genuinely very helpful to do this. So I think I want to sacrifice this to hit Molten 6. Okay, we're up on Molten 6. I have... Frostbite 4 with literally no Frostbite. I guess I'm carrying Stroke of Genius to the end of this run because that's what we're seeing here. I have no more money, no more Glyphs. We're chilling. I guess that's it. Alright, here we go. Shadow of Runestone. I think we stand a pretty decent chance of winning this, but it's not a gimme. Now this boss, we always want to start at the top. Recall that the modifier I have is... I can shoot them. Three orbs is pretty cool. So I can shoot them. The hands don't hurt them. Yep. All right. Very cool. I'm risking eight. So the first play is definitely... I never... By the way, I didn't actually max out Expert Binder. We came close, but they didn't show me one in the end, which is a real bummer. So... We still have a pretty good setup here. I'm feeling decent about a lot of our choices, but we didn't hit all the pieces I wanted. So, unfortunate, but okay, right? It's okay. All right, Blur is absolutely happening. This reduces so much damage on this turn. Just, all right, cool. We're now healing here. So I really don't have to do anything else fancy. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this Incula because I absolutely hate this thing. How much health does it have? My crits don't do enough, nearly enough damage to really threaten that guy. No, not a chance. All right, cool. That's incredible news. So I think I do want to throw a fire over there. Cool, good, great. I'm going to go ahead and take the orb here. I'm going to throw some fire up top left. Good, great. Getting the burn stacks out. Let's take orb, next orb. All right, I think I want to try to wiggle the hands to hitting the boss here. I'm gonna hit blur two, and then we go orb. I'm gonna walk over here, try to hit him. All right, and that should, that's two enemies being punctured. And I'm going to, instead of, I'm not gonna risk Incula's attack, I'm just gonna end this with a ridiculously strong super spirit bomb that I have activated. Just boom, fantastic. We get some burn spread thanks to, what is that? Molten Six, which is actually pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this. I'm going to hit an enemy with the orb just to get the get some will collector, but also to get the charge from it. And then we just walk away from this. He should get double bonked here. Bonk, bonk. Great. He's disabled. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and I'm at risk of essentially zero damage here, which is great. I'm just going to open with blur, take an orb. I'm going to walk up a bit and throw the fire while I'm inside because it will force them to target their buddy old pal. I don't need more blur. I kind of just grab an orb and chill. Right? I guess I throw fire at one of these guardians just because I would like to get... Like, think about this. I would just be like, all right, sure. I would like to get more death scythe triggers. And then we sit over here and heal in the orb. I actually... The only thing I should do now is simply run myself over and simultaneously hit one of the wall dudes because I want full charge. Cool. And I would like, I'm basically just greeting for setting up Shattered Will for next turn. 
All right, I'm guaranteed to get it next turn. Cool, good. He gets hit by himself again. I just go ahead and click blur and we get a crit, which auto phases here, which is, you know, pretty decent. Cool. I'm taking zeros because reasons, so I guess. Same deal as before, just run yourself over. We'll leave three orbs on the floor and have a field day next turn when he phases. So I'm gonna try to be in the middle of this. The crazy thing about this, he hasn't actually laid down a lava field yet, which is unlikely. Start with a blur, it's good. Okay, I do not have full charge yet. But I will soon. There's full charge. I want to, I have to. It is important to kill Incula. She steals my max hit points. Good. Also, we get big burn spreader here. I have so many orbs that I just do not have anything to really worry about. We're gonna go ahead and run ourselves over. This guy is gonna hit the boss, which is cool. So that's great. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and hit Blur real fast. Sure, 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 here's some burn, champ. Throw it at him, good. Take another orb. Fine, right? I actually just do not care about a lot of this. So I run up, I blast him, I orb, I throw fire at him, I walk away, I hit myself, hit myself again, and he's phasing. He's going to be over there on the right, so let's try to position ourselves accurately. We're straight up just killing every single unit, which is good and bad, because he's going to respawn them all on the phase change, but it's a pretty solid setup, right? If he spawns everything back, oh boy. And I'm going to blur one, orb, rude. I think the play here is to make sure, to guarantee the orb, the blur two. So we're gonna do that. All right, this that reduces all the guardians to zero. I would like to one, make sure this guy is attacking the boss here. I then want to throw fire and hit all of them. I have a very powerful super spirit bomb here that I wish to use. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the last orb and I am going to run myself over and take zero on this turn. And I'm going to prep Shattered Will to the best of my ability for next turn. He should get hit by at least one of them. He does, okay, good. Yeah, all right, cool. Now, I'm at risk of zeros here, which is very cool. I'm just going to make sure to hit yourself with your orb when you move it. Always necessary. I would like very much to... What's the play? Super Spirit Bomb is a pretty good play here, I think. So let's move it back and run ourselves over. Let's take orb here, and Super Spirit Bomb is completely crushing it. Take another orb, throw some fire down, take another orb, throw some fire down. All right, we win. I don't have to do anything fancy here, we get it. Great, cool. I could have, you know, I could have stalled here and tried my best to get more death scythe procs and things, but we're already coming out ahead. I have 87 hit points, which is extremely efficient. Extremely good, in fact. I'm fully offsetting Stinging Wounds, even though it is negatively affecting Orb Lord's healing by half, roughly. It's a bummer. I don't get any of these boosts, do I? No, that's a shame. And I think, I mean, I will take the heal, that's something. I got four health back, cool. Vestige Extractor, there's nothing I wanna grind up here, yeah? Accurate. We were chilling at a cool like 400 magic power by the end of that combat. So once we get strong enough, the later turns, after we've turtled the early ones, it's disgusting. 
Anyway, we're gonna blast this man into the ether. I'm gonna stand as close to the edge as possible in case I get starting Argolath. We did. All right, it's not that bad. It could have been worse. Let's get some burn moving. If I move entirely, I do want to do blur once. Grab the orb. Throw more fire. Cool. Grab the orb. It's fine if I end up just throwing burns a ton here. This is not really that big of a deal. I'm already taking zero. It's just a lot of burn stacks that are going to be helping us out. Okay, first, run yourself over. Run yourself over. We do want to try to greed here on Shattered Will and things. Remember, this does benefit our forgotten names in a significant way. So we want to try to greed on these things when possible. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit that blur first because it's good. We're going to walk. Burn stacks? Sure, 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 sure. We'll toss them. Run yourself over. It's good. Orb. Burn stacks? Sure. Run yourself over. Blur. More burn stacks. Cool. It's great. I don't want to get hit regardless. So I'm just going to walk away and continually gain forgotten name stacks. End your turn in there. I think we're... Are we actually at full health? We actually are. Incredible. I have somehow managed to full heal myself. Unlikely, but it, I guess it was bound to happen eventually. Okay, let's start with an orb for blur. Orb, blur. I want to move down here. Hit him to reorganize and reshuffle. Toss some burn at him, and then we're going to move up. And at this point, my goal... I don't... Is that going to hit him? I don't know. That might hit him. Move it out first. Yeah, well, it does hit him. I had a feeling it might. It's okay. And now we just kind of chill up here a little bit. We're going to run ourselves over a bunch. And it's pretty decent. Our goal basically is just to hard greed for Shattered Will and Forgotten Name procs, right? That's all we're doing. I'm up to 285 magic power already. He's la la landed here. It's fine. I'm probably going to take the Shroom. I just don't feel like taking this two damage. Although I guess it kind of doesn't matter. We go Blur. It's good. Orb. A Blur hit is fantastic. Orb. Another Blur hit is still fantastic. We throw fire at him. Great. I'm going to take the orb, the shroom here, just to reduce this number. I'm going to take this orb. And now we do the same thing again. We basically just run ourselves and an enemy over repeatedly. Shattered Will triggers. Excellent news. We get more procs here. I would like to end the turn with it on me. We're at 365 power. Uh, where our burn is quickly getting out of control here. This is a very powerful combo. And our defense is extremely efficient here. Cool, I'm taking zeros. Now, at this point, I think we just throw fire at him so these stacks don't go away. Take an orb, and I keep throwing fire at him. It's just efficient. And anytime an enemy dies, it does a lot of heavy lifting. Let's just run ourselves over for a while. It's cool to do it. Our entire point here is to hard greed on... Yeah, we actually phase here accidentally because I have triggered Forgotten Name and pushed my magic power over a threshold to insta-kill him with burn, which is fantastic news. So, that's cool. Great work. Big phase change, everything goes crazy. All right, cool, wonderful. I don't really care about this one Cinderpox. It's not a threat. Let's go for the blur first. Orb, I will throw fire at you if you give it to me. It's good to do it. Blur is your friend. Moving up. Another burn stack. All good. Throwing the fire at him. Otherwise, I mean, we still do the same stuff, right? 
think I am gonna wiggle up here and go for. Oh, I gotta move a little to the right. Eh. All right, good. We get them all. Cool. A super spirit bomb represents a massive amount of health. Look at this. This thing is doing six thousand five hundred here. It's a real solid blast. The main reason I'm focusing on, oh no, I took one damage, is just so that I can get rid of them and not have to think about this too much. I do think it's still correct. I take the hit, it's fine. I then go walk over and just eat hits here. Remember, this is this is all acceptable because we've planned for this. 11. It's not worth it. I trade down on the shield on Psychokinesis, so we just kind of chill here. I eat that dirt, but that applies so much damage that I'm not worried about much here. Orb. Blur. Orb. Blur. Orb. I want to guarantee the blur here. It's fine. We're going to throw fire. I'm going to hit those guys. Great. I do want to run him over a couple times here. Get rid of that ink shield. And then walk down here a bit. And I get the super spirit bomb that cleaves everything. Great job. And then he, he's dead, actually. Great job. Cool. I mean, Blaze of Bridget, right? It's nice. That's the, the real thing I want to say is that I just, I just think that you can find much more consistent trinkets than Clips of Extraction. It was fun showing you this, right? I mean, our, our run ended up being kind of weird. We had some high rolls, right? I think the main high roll was that I had so many, like Will Collector 8, Orb Lord 7 always feels good. That's a great combo. We didn't finish the trifecta though, right? We didn't end up with actual Shattered Will generation of import. The only Shattered Will we were reasonably generating was Fleece of Gold. Too slow to infinite. But it's okay because we had phasing image, which is fantastic, giving double three stacks of blur, actually, which is awesome. And then that combined with all wills bard gave us extra will. And we had bonus 56 hit points from death scythe to be com like comfy. This is basically just scaling defense so that I can bank it for the final combat. Psychokinesis was a fantastic hit. We had double auras on this. I think this is also something you should really play round, right? I see a lot of folks taking early upgrades to your one skill on Clairvoyant. Don't do that. The upgrades later on are so strong. I want to point this out. Shielding Aura, Heal Aura, and Hexing Aura are all on your one skill, okay? Like, all of them are on the one skill. They're so nuts. You need to have slots for them when they show up. What is this? I think Psychic Pulse has Damage Aura and then Grievous Aura, if memory serves. This is a whole other build, right? You can go Attack Binding Scaling and then just do Aura Surge on the two as the Ascension here and then go like crits and stuff and just absolutely Shadow Realm enemies with basically Spirit Bombs in the form of your two skill, which is much more efficient. I think Super Spirit Bomb gets you know, complained about a lot. It's expensive. It's, you know, not really efficient, but it doesn't have to be efficient is the thing. If you, sometimes you just need to kill a whole bunch of things. And if you've got the crit on this and you've got the buffs for it, you can really do some serious damage with this. You look at how much I just blasted with this on various combats. The elites were definitely the biggest threat to this run. We were, we're not slow, but we're pretty slow. Right, I would say we're slower than some runs because we're relying on Forgotten Name to really pop off before we get to the point where we're clearing waves quickly. And th that combat demands immediate ramp. Just be fast. I really think that this exact same run probably loses with Clips of Extraction. Maybe you find a way, right? We do have Orb Lord 7, so we benefit from the orbs. A lot of healing, right? But at the same time, and obviously a Will Collector 8 benefits from it too, but it's just, I, I don't know. I feel like without the direction of the early burn, right? What if we, what if that first one, instead of without Blaze of Bridget, we were shown what? It was Lightning Bolt and Cleave. That other one could have been, let me try to think of a terrible example here. That could have just been, geez, I don't even know. There's, there's def, some bad binding, right? Some binding you look at and you go, oh, bummer. It's like Cleave. No, we already said Cleave. It's Grasp, right? It's the grappling hook dude. So 
If you see that initial three, what do you? What is your play, right? I guess you're taking Lightning Bolt and hoping for the best. Things like Blaze of Bridget hedge, hedge against that and prevent you from being a me, at a mega risk, right? There's a lot of bindings that are good, and then there's a lot of bindings that are really, really not good, in my opinion. And those are what's really dragging your run down more than anything. And this also, I mean, actually, is a lot of people say that sometimes the Molten Set bonus is redundant here, but... It actually was super necessary for us to hit Molten 6, which did matter. So, kind of cool. Good stuff all around. Very pleased with this run. Hopefully, this demos that Clairvoyant is pretty consistent if you know what you if you know how to approach her, in my opinion. I don't want to say if you know what you're doing, because I'm sure a lot of people know what they're doing and still struggle. I think things like Clips of Extraction are hurting you. I think there are other better options. You can probably still win with it. Sure, you can high roll with anything, right? I could take no trinket and probably win most runs. Some runs. So, yeah, definitely some runs, not most runs. But even with no trinket, I think you can win some runs. That's probably what's happening. In my strongest opinion, you gotta be fast. You just gotta be fast, and it's too slow. This, this is fast. See, uh, there's some turns where I was throwing out so many of these incendiaries. Mimic died in two rounds after I got that set of turn. Crazy. Anyway, not much else to say. A very good run. Felt very confident through the end. No real mega risk here. So I will let you go. Great work. Go team. So hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.